So how many houses should you view before you make a purchase? Now, this question can be answered a lot of different ways. I'm gonna give you some strategy so that you can get this right, really depending, uh, well, really no matter what market you're in, okay? So obviously in a hot, super fast paced market, you know, you'd like to kind of compact this, but the negative of that is that it pressures you to make a decision on a home that you, you may not really love. Um, so here's my strategy. You've got to do the work up front that we've talked about in the last couple of videos of getting ready, getting your game plan ready, being prepared before you go out so that you won't feel impulsive even if you purchase the very first house you go and physically view, right? Uh, the reason for that is you will know that you were only going out to see really strong contenders. That's what I call them, a contender, like a, you know, like a, a boxer that has a great shot at the championship. You're only going to go see a home that has a great shot at you buying it. The, the other type of, of home viewing should be done online. I mean, at, at absolute minimum, at least should be done by your real estate agent handing you some paperwork to view, right? But 98 plus percent of us are gonna do that initial um, narrowing of the options online, which is great. What a wonderful privilege we have uh, not to need to spend as much time, as much energy, as much travel time and interaction and all those things out in other people's homes. There would never be a consideration right? You can do that online and it can help you narrow your criteria. Maybe you think you need a five bedroom, but after looking at 57 of them online, you realize there aren't that many of those in the area you want to be. And the price of five bedrooms is crazy, but a four bedroom with a second living room or a four bedroom with a study actually gets you everything you need. You can save money and more of those exist in the area you want to be. That, that's all said just to illustrate the point that we want to do the bulk of this home search online ahead of time, then we only want to go out and see homes that are contenders. And when that happens, it often does occur that you end up wanting to make an offer and purchasing one of those first one, two, three or four houses, right? It's totally fine though, if you need to see more homes than that, right? So there is no magic number to how many homes you should see before you offer, but there is an appropriate strategy. And that's what I'm trying to share with you here. I don't care if it's your first house or your 101st house, you should buy the home that you feel emotionally and maybe even more importantly, that you can quantify as the right home for the criteria and the needs and the desires of you and your family and your finances, right? So we talked back in the video about getting ready, about putting a game plan together, about formulating a strategy, about having your non-negotiables known having committed to those up front. It doesn't mean that these things never change. It means these are the primary things that really we should be very reluctant and very slow to change, right? If you said, we need this many bedrooms, we need this sort of yard, we need to be in this school district, we need this budget, we shouldn't go change two or three or four of those. I mean, maybe budget could move a little bit, or there might be one other school district you really, really like, or you could settle for a slightly less yard if it backs up to a green belt or there's a park nearby. I mean, it doesn't mean things don't change, but what it means, once you've set those non-negotiables, it's okay to look at houses until you have found all or almost all of those non-negotiable items in one home that feels right and checks those boxes. A great real estate agent is gonna keep you accountable to those non-negotiables, but is also not going to pressure you to buy a home before you've seen enough homes to be confident. Now, here's a mistake a lot of buyers make in regard to how many homes should we see. There's this feeling for some people that says, I can't, we, there's no way I can make an offer on this house because I haven't seen all my other options. One of them could be better. One of them might be cheaper. One of them might be closer. One of them might have a slightly larger yard. And I understand that fear, but depending on what market you're in, meaning a buyer's market, a seller's market, a really fast paced market, a really slow market, you can lose a house in any market especially a fast paced market where sellers have a lot of leverage and buyers are having to compete. But in any market, I have witnessed it 
in a market with tons of housing inventory where buyers can sleep on it. Buyers can wait a week to come back because typically homes aren't moving that quickly. I have still seen a buyer go view a house that's been on the market for a year, decide to sleep on it and lose that house to somebody else. It's just the reality of the world. When it can happen, it can happen to you. So when the when I try to answer this question for you, how many homes should you see? The answer is however many it takes. But in order for that answer to make sense, you have to have had a strategy up front. However many it takes to achieve those non-negotiables, to feel comfortable and also know quantitatively on the checklist, on your priority list, that you've got you know almost all or every single one. Now, I don't wanna discount that feeling part, but I do wanna caution you that just because a home feels right doesn't necessarily mean it is right. And lots of buyers approach this process very emotionally. Sellers tend to be more analytical. Buyers tend to be more emotional. So buyers can walk into a house and just say, man, this feels like home. And sometimes an agent needs to say, that's awesome. This is a great house, but don't forget that it's next door to this thing you said you would never want to be next door to. That it's um, because of what just happened last week with the city council, this neighborhood feels going to change a little bit. You know, you've got to understand that those feelings are real, but they're not always reliable, right? So it's good to feel like home. That's a great thing that builds confidence and, and it can motivate you to really want to be and, and put down roots and live life in a place. But it doesn't mean that you've got to buy now. You, you maybe should look at a few more, right? And also, don't let the lack of that emotion of like, oh my gosh, this place feels wonderful, stop you from really considering a property. Sometimes those emotions take a second visit or you know, re-looking at the numbers and all, you can start to fall in love with the property when you realize relative to your other options, how great it really is. So th that, that feeling of home is very important, but it can't always be the leading factor. So that's, <laughs> that's, a, that's a challenging answer to a really difficult question. But let me summarize by saying, as you need to see as many homes as it takes. But more often than not, when you've done the homework, you've created the strategy, you've got a great agent, you've appropriately viewed the right homes online up front, you really are probably going to usually be down to just a handful of properties that are real contenders anyway. So it's highly likely that you'll end up making an offer or purchasing one of the first you know, four or five properties you do go to see. And that is great. That means you've got a great strategy. You're executing on it. You're seeing homes that are all quality contenders and you're choosing the one that feels right, but also aligns with your non-negotiable criteria. And to me, that is a great way to put you, your family, your finances in a great position in a new home. Now, make sure you watch the next video in this series about when to make an offer. It's another really strategic piece of this overall process in this whole series of strategic nuggets on how to put this whole picture together and buy a home that will be a real blessing to your family and not become a burden. I'll talk to you on the next one.